I don't think the vast majority of Americans understand the severity of this migrant crisis and the impact that not only is going to have in the United States, but also the rest of the world. With censorship on the rise and Western mainstream media pushing out propaganda controlled by the state, who is really telling the truth? Unfortunately, we cannot trust the media anymore and must take ownership of getting to the truth. Hence the reason why this channel now exists. In this video, we're going to dip our toes into this migrant crisis issue since it hits so close to my home. All this and more on The Reading Room. Recognizing that I have a global audience, let me give you the high level as to what has been going on at Capitol Hill with this bald guy. His name is Alejandro Mayorkas, and he's the head of Homeland Security and is responsible for this border crisis and maintaining it. Obviously, he's not doing his job. And right now, there are hearings going on deciding whether or not he should be impeached. Quite frankly, I don't know why we have to go through a two-month or three-month or however long process to decide whether or not they fired this guy. You heard at the beginning of this video, Biden himself say that, no, the border is not secure. Here is an example of Mayorkas lying through his teeth. Chief Ortiz was asked about the border being secure. Uh, he gave an answer that I thought uh, was very truthful, very forthcoming, uh, when he said that he could not testify before this committee that the border was secure. He actually testified that five of the nine sectors along the southwest border were not secure. And so my question to you, Secretary Mayorkas, is, is it your testimony that all nine of the southwest sectors from the Rio Grande Valley to San Diego, that under whatever definition you use, that you believe that all nine sectors are secure? Congressman, you and I have uh, spoken about this issue before, both under oath uh, and in your office. Uh, I do not understate the challenge that the border presents. And, and, and I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm very limited on my time. It's, it's yes or no. Do you believe that all nine sectors are secure? And I'll be happy to have a conversation with you outside of this hearing, uh, but my time is very limited. Congressman, as I have said before, we are devoting all of the resources available to securing the border. So currently, yes, yes or no. As we sit here today, based on these figures here, based upon all the figures we've had for the last two years, is are every are all nine sectors of the southwest border secure congressman um, it is my testimony that sectors at different times month to month um experience different levels of challenges and, and, challenges. and, and i understand that mr um, secretary and, and i'm not and i'm not trying to cut you off i'm asking you that today as we sit here today are all nine sectors of the Southwest border secure? And I'm just asking for a yes or no answer. Congressman, I know you are asking for a yes or no answer. And the fact of the matter is that the challenges at the border are very complex and dynamic. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to take from are, that that if you can't answer yes, then the answer is no. That is, that is not true. All right, so then it's you're not, saying all nine are secure. It is my testimony that the border is secure, and we are working every day, day and night, to increase its security. And there are multiple instances where this man has been caught in lies, but they're still debating whether or not they're going to impeach him. How long is this bureaucracy going to continue? We have like close to 10,000 people crossing a day now. In this next clip with Senator Hawley, you have Mayorkas being defiant and rudely challenging the senator for asking a question. What about people who say things like, on October the 7th, F Israel, I'm cleaning up the language here, F Israel, the government and its military, are you ready for your downfall? People who say things like F Israel and any Jew who supports Israel, 
May your conscience haunt your dreams until your last breath. Palestine will be free one day. F apartheid Israel and is any Israeli. What, this is pretty extreme rhetoric, don't you think? Senator, um, I do, and I think there is a distinction between espousing or endorsing terrorist ideology and uh, speech uh, that is uh, odious, that does not rise to that um, level. Fair enough. This person works for you. This is Nuja Ali, an employee of the Department of Homeland Security, who posted these comments on October the 7th. That's not all she posted. She also posted this graphic. Now, this is a fake graphic, I want to be clear, but I think we understand it. This is a paraglider, a Hamas paraglider, depicted here with a machine gun flying into Israel. She posted it under her online alias with the celebratory Free Palestine. Mr. Secretary, what, what's going on here? Is this, is this typical of, of people who work at DHS? This is an asylum and immigration officer who is posting these, frankly, pro-genocidal slogans and images on the day that Israelis are being slaughtered in their beds. What have you done about this? Four things I'd like to say to you. Number one, your question to suggest that it, that is emblematic of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security is despicable. Number I'm sorry, two, what have you done? This person works for the Department of Homeland Security. Have you fired her? That was one of four answers. Have you fired her? One. Have you fired her? Don't come to this hearing room when Israel has been invaded and Jewish students are barricaded in libraries in this country and cannot be escorted out because they are threatened for their lives, you have employees who are celebrating genocide and you are saying it's despicable for me to ask the question? Has she been fired? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary. After um, the consumption of Senator Hawley's time, I'd like to speak. Has she been fired? Because I will we not would like be, an answer. Would you? Because I will not be given the opportunity. Has she been fired? So uh, that individual has been placed on administrative leave. So she's one. not been fired. Number two. Number Why has two, she not been fired? Number two, the individual was hired in 2019. Why has she not been number fired? Number three, I cannot speak to an ongoing personnel matter. Why, why has this person not been fired? Your answer is you can't speak to it? This isn't sufficient to fire her? I am not in a position to speak to an ongoing personnel matter. This that, isn't sufficient to fire her? That's what you're telling me? That is not what I'm saying. But she's still on your payroll as that, we sit here today. That is not what I'm saying. She's still on your payroll as we sit here today. Senator? How many cases? She was an asylum and immigration officer. How many cases did she adjudicate? Senator, I'm not in a position to speak about an ongoing person. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking you how many cases she adjudicated. My uh, answer remains. This dude is a straight-up narcissistic psychopath, and he is the head of U.S. Homeland Security, welcoming in thousands of undocumented people, making this country less safe day by day. Technically, this guy works for the American taxpayer. We are his boss. I don't understand. He should be fired ASAP because he's not doing his job. What is there to discuss? So the bigger question, though, that we should be asking is knowing that Biden has openly admitted that the border is not secure. And we, as the American people, have given billions of dollars to securing the border and providing resources for these people. In fact, more resources than our own citizens here in the United States. Question is, why is this being allowed to happen if the situation is getting worse? And this is why the Republicans are saying no more money until we close the border. And that's exactly what needs to happen. Not give more money to help set up more processing centers in order to process these people to come in here quickly. It's more about why are they not shutting it down temporarily? I'm not saying shut it down forever. Shut it down for a short period of time so we can get ourselves stabilized again. The only explanation that I can give after putting all these facts together is that this is intentional and deliberate. This didn't start with Biden. This wasn't Trump's fault. This situation that we're in is a result of Obama. To give you some perspective, let's take a look at the raw data coming from the Center for Immigration Studies. This nonprofit strictly focuses on the numbers and the census information. 
In 2000, coming off of the Clinton era, now into the Bush Jr. era, we saw that there were, on average, 1.2 million legal and illegal combined coming into the country on average per year. One of the main reasons that provoked Donald Trump to run was because of the surge of people coming into this country undocumented and illegally draining the U.S. resources. As you can see from this chart here, in the Obama administration, there was a skyrocket of people coming through. If we could think back during the Obama era, during that time, social media was on the cusp of blowing up. It wasn't quite there yet, so for the most part, the media still had the control of pushing their propaganda. And the narrative that was pushed with the face of change, President Obama, was everyone was going to be equal and we were going to have a better life. I mean, literally painted this fairy tale, even though there were problems in the background going on that were being caused intentionally. There was a lot of crises going on during the Obama era in which money was being spent left and right. Let's not forget the housing crisis in which the banks got a massive bailout. Many Americans had to go on welfare. You also had the influx of immigrants coming in and the amount of money that was being dedicated to that, as well as the wars that were going on. I mean, literally, the world seemed like it was blowing up under the Obama administration, but he made us all feel like everything was going to be OK. We're going to take care of you. Not realizing that he sold the American people out to the globalists under this Agenda 2030. It's not a coincidence that all of Western civilization are experiencing the same problems and crises. What the world has been experiencing in this transformation really is the Cloward Piven strategy. I'm sure many of you are like, what the heck is that? So this strategy is a political theory proposed by two sociology professors at Columbia University in 1966 that advises activists to create radical change by crashing the system. It encourages the orchestration of various crises designed to push society to the breaking point and steer the populace into embracing an authoritarian socialist government. Cloward and Piven explained in a 1966 Nation magazine article that their strategy to flood the United States with illegal immigrants would produce bureaucratic disruption in welfare agencies and fiscal disruption in local and state governments. The ultimate objective here that we're seeing is to wipe out poverty, allegedly with this, by establishing a guaranteed annual income for every person. So what we're noticing with all these crises, more and more people are becoming more dependent on government welfare. As you can see here into Obama's reign, we had at the first term around 2012, almost 161 million Americans out of 313 million Americans on some type of government funding. That's half the population of the United States getting money from the government. A fun fact that everyone should know about is that these leftist sociologists, Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven, were professors there at Columbia while Obama was an undergraduate from 1981 to 1983. We would be pretty naive to think that Obama was not aware of these two professors. So the policies that Obama was putting into place literally were programs written into law that consumed more than they actually produce, which you would consider that policies of insolvency. Hence the reason why we're getting into so much debt. So when we look at the core strategy and its elements, you can tell that the Biden administration is following it to a T. Now, if you pay attention, what we have been seeing that seems to be a little more in our faces is the Democratic Party acting as big government progressive socialists in which they have been taking our freedoms as well as our money and transferring it to themselves as well as their supporters. You notice how many NGOs have popped up to help with crises. We look at like what's going on in the Ukraine and money going over there and somehow it's just disappearing. Also, let's not forget about the contracts that are being signed with Boeing and Lockheed Martin to support wars. Who do you think has invested in stocks for all of that? It's the very same people who are taking our money and giving it away. What's supposed to be happening is it's supposed to be redistribution from rich to poor, but it really is redistribution from low income and middle class to the government for this redistribution. 
It is how they are impoverishing middle class America and driving us to become more dependent on various social welfare programs so we can all get in line. If you notice, the wages are always staying the same, but because of inflation, you're buying less and thus puts a strain on you, which then naturally causes anxiety and your mental health is affected because you're trying to keep your head above water now. The strategy is designed to put stress on the country, overloading the U.S. public welfare system and government in order to precipitate a crisis that would lead to replacement of the Constitution, in my opinion, and the free enterprise capitalist economy with now replacing it with this socialist Marxist, and you call it what it is, communism, to a centrally planned economy. So by grouping us all into this communal structure, what we're seeing is this fallacy of luring us with this offer like give up a little of your freedom and you will have a little more security. But as Ben Franklin would say, those who trade freedom for security get neither. Now, as I mentioned in this video, I don't think it's a coincidence that the problems that the United States is having at the moment are the same problems that all the other Western world countries are having. So when we look at migration, that's an area as well as inflation. But let's talk about education and misinformation. And all of a sudden, the race to go ahead and put regulation around our free speech. It's not a coincidence that all of a sudden, all Western countries now are screaming about oppression and racism, which Actually, racism was America's thing. We were the ones who are known to scream racism. Now, all of a sudden, we've got all these other culturally diverse countries screaming racism. Now, many of you might still be skeptical that this strategy is being executed at this very moment. But what confirmed it to me was when you go to the World Economic Forum and you type in Cloward Piven, only one search result comes up. And that is the article for Now is the Time for a Great Reset of Capitalism. What that tells me, it's not a coincidence that this one and only article has the tag of Cloward Piven, which is exactly what is going on. This shit has been seeded in our country and rooted in our education system in which we're seeing this agenda play out not only in the education system, but as well as the textbooks that are being forced onto our children. And we're beginning to see how they're taking truth and revising it to whatever the agenda is. It's this revisionist history that we see happening. And this is a fact. What is truly concerning is that we have a whole generation who has been indoctrinated in this ideology that is now entering not only into the workforce, but in government positions. It's really troubling and upsetting to see the younger generation in Congress being indoctrinated in this ideology and pushing this socialist Marxist agenda under the impression that it is democracy that they are championing for. This one jackass, Sandy Cortez, also known as AOC, is a proud supporter of the Democratic Socialist Party, also known as the Cloward and Piven strategy. This is where the party came from. The most disturbing and frustrating thing that I see here with this generation for the Democrats who are trying to legislate are all indoctrinated in this ideology that only looks at race and oppression and not thinking about the country as well as what it stands for. In fact, some of them are even against what we stand for. At the time of recording this video, Ron DeSantis had dropped out of the presidential race. In his concession speech, he summarizes everything that has been discussed in this video. Even though he may not reference the Cloward Piven strategy, make no mistake, they recognize that what is actually happening here is undemocratic and is a threat to our freedoms. And it reminds me why I decided to run for president, to fight for those who have been forgotten in this country. This is America's time for choosing. We can choose to allow a border invasion, or we can choose to stop it. We can choose reckless borrowing and spending, or we can choose to limit government and lower inflation. We can choose political indoctrination, or we can choose classical education. These choices are symptoms of the underlying struggle 
to ensure that constitutional government can endure and that Western civilization can survive. In part two, we're going to take a look at some of these recent congressional hearings discussing this border crisis. You will be alarmed to see how this cloward piven strategy has gripped the Democratic Party amongst the younger generation and have infected our government with these Marxist socialist ideals. You don't want to miss it, so please don't forget to subscribe and like this video so you can be notified of more informative videos such as this. As I've said this before, this is a learning journey for me, and I've set this channel up to invite anyone who wants to come along to help get to a semblance of truth and reality. I believe that it is the responsibility of each of us to take ownership of our freedoms. The more informed we are, the better we can make choices instead of having the government do it for us. It's not going to be easy, but I have faith that we will be able to turn this ship around. Remember, we are the majority. They need us more than we need them. Stand tall and do not be afraid to use your voice. In repeating the words of Ben Franklin, any society that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security will deserve neither and lose both. Remember those words when you see the manipulation of these leaders forcing you to compromise. Do not be fooled, otherwise you will be enslaved. The choice is yours while you still have it.